There's a few different ideas that I've been thinking about recently since looking at the Remind ending cutscenes, looking at Melody of Memory and looking at the original Kingdom Hearts 3 secret ending. And some things just weren't really adding up for me. And it led to me asking myself certain questions. Questions that led to me coming up with potential answers. Answers that were a little strange but nonetheless intriguing and led to some implications that I thought might be quite interesting to share. The question I was asking myself was where exactly is Sora? Because I don't know. I was confused. I was like, okay, Sora after the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3, where exactly is he? Now we know in the original secret ending it showed him being in Shibuya. But something about that just doesn't quite add up because it doesn't really mesh with everything that's come after that secret ending. Melody of Memory would lead us to believe that Sora is in a place of unreality or fiction and the city known as Quadratum is part of that world from the unreality. Now we know how Riku got to Shinjuku, it was through his dreams and then we know that after that he went off to Quadratum at the end of Melody of Memory. But it's the Sora side of things that I'm not quite understanding because there's a few things that just don't really add up to me, you know, um, and it left me a bit confused. But I think I've got a potential answer that I've come to for myself. Firstly, I was asking myself, is Sora in Quadratum? Now I have a feeling he isn't actually in Quadratum. The Nameless Star, who by the way I still believe is called Sora, only suggested Quadratum to Riku because it's the city that she thought matched up best with what Riku was describing. But that doesn't mean it's the place Sora is actually in. Quadratum, to be honest, may not even be the same place that Shibuya is in. If it is the same place, then Quadratum is likely just the name of the city rather than Tokyo. And then Shibuya is just one of its districts, just like how Shibuya is a district in Tokyo in real life. But if that's true, then Sora would be in the Shibuya district of Quadratum, which would mean that when Riku arrives in Quadratum, he will actually be in the same city as Sora. But I'm still not entirely sure they're the same place. But regardless of whether Sora's in Quadratum or not, he's definitely shown to us to be in Shibuya at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. So the question that came next to me was, how exactly did he end up in Shibuya? Now again, you may be thinking, well, he got there when he vanished at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. But hold on a minute, what about Remind? In Remind, we saw that he met with Yozora in the night version of the final world. But depending on whether you win or lose, he ends up in two completely different states. Now we can discuss which ending is canon, but the thing is, based on Kingdom Hearts 3's ending and Melody of Memory, neither ending really makes much sense just by itself. In the bad ending, Sora is crystallized. And then shortly after, Yozora enters the final world before he wakes up. So if that ending is canon, does that mean Sora is just frozen in crystal in that place? And where even is that place? It's clearly not the real Quadratum because it's a separate place from wherever Yozora has woken up, which is why I don't believe Sora is in Quadratum. But the thing is, if this ending is canon somehow, then how is Sora walking around in the Kingdom Hearts 3 secret ending? Maybe the other ending can give us an answer. In the good ending, Yozora realizes that he fucked with the wrong Sora, and then he vanishes, which leaves Sora in the final world, and then Yuzora wakes up. But wait a minute, wait, 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 what? So how is Sora in the final world? Because we know from Melody of Memory he can't possibly be there because when the fairy godmother transports Kairi and Riku there, Sora's not there. And again, we know from the secret ending that he's definitely ended up in Shibuya somehow. But the good ending doesn't explain that either. But the thing is, there's a very minor detail that I think may be a key telltale sign as to what exactly is going on here. When Sora arrives in this city in Shibuya, he wakes up there. He's clearly looking around in awe and he's completely in shock of where he is. But if we go based just off what both of the secret endings of Remind shows us, neither one makes it clear how Sora would have ended up in Shibuya. But the original secret ending would imply he woke up there from some sort of sleep. So here's what I think is the answer. When Sora vanishes at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, he ends up in the night version of the final world. Because remember, the final world is where death and dreams meet. That's how the fairy godmother was able to transport Riku and Kairi there. 
bear in mind that Sora gets to the nighttime final world by waking up. The power of waking. Yuzora gets there by sleeping. I guess the power of sleeping, maybe? It's very interesting how that seems to work though. So it's a place connected to dreams. So when Sora meets Yuzora, they are both dreaming. That's why no matter how the fight ends, we see Yuzora wake up. Which would mean then that logically, if it is indeed a dream, then no matter how the fight ends, Sora must also wake up too. And that is what we see in the original secret ending. That would explain why they're both confused, why they're like, is any of this for real? None of this makes sense. That would explain why they're so confused. Because from Sora's side of things, he just saw a fictional character from a video game. And from Yuzora's side of things, he's dreaming. And it doesn't really make a bunch of sense because he's seeing Sora and Sora doesn't look how he expects Sora to look. Both of them are in a dream and neither one of them understands why they're seeing the other. So in other words, the first secret ending scene that we saw with Sora takes place after the fight with Yuzora and this is when he is truly crossed over to the other side. Remember, the final world is like a sort of midway point. Remember, Chirithi describes it as a sort of limbo. So the final world is like a limbo, it's a place in between. That would explain why people from either side can end up there, including the Nameless Star and Yuzora, because it's a limbo. That's why Sora and Yuzora were able to meet when otherwise they would never have crossed paths, because they're in a state of limbo. So I think that it was a dream. The entire fight basically didn't really happen, and that's why no matter which ending you get, Yuzora wakes up in his car, and that would also explain why Sora wakes up in the original secret ending of Kingdom Hearts 3. So if that's true, then basically both of the endings are just a matter of perspective, because notice how depending on who wins, the line at the end, none of this makes sense to me, is said by whoever the victor is. None of this makes sense to me. None of this makes sense to me. I think both are equally as valid because if my theory is correct then both of them result in the same thing. Both of them wake up but the question on Sora's end is this, did he actually wake up or did he just end up in a deeper dream? We know from Dream Drop Distance that's possible but then that would also mean that the Shibuya that we see Sora waking up in is a dream Shibuya and that would explain how it might tie into the world ends with you. And look, that's despite the fact that Nomura keeps trying to slip around it and acting like they're not connected. But hey, I know, I know it's misdirection because it's becoming very clear that something about dreams, sleeping and other worlds is happening here. And that leaves a lot of room for The World Ends With You to slip back into the mix. Especially because the last time we saw The World Ends With You, it was in Dream Drop Distance. And especially now that we have Neo The World Ends With You, there's no way something isn't going on here. Honestly, I would not be surprised if Sora pops up in that game somewhere. I mean, hey, remember Neku's famous last words? See you in Shibuya. Sure, it's a deal. Essentially, what I'm saying is that I think everything we witnessed between Sora and Yuzora in Remind was a dream. And I think both of the endings are basically some different versions of how the dream turned out based on their perspectives. But regardless of the perspective, I believe it was a dream sequence anyway and both of them wake up. Yuzora wakes up in his car and Sora wakes up in Shibuya. But the question that remains, if what I've suggested is true, is whether or not the Shibuya Sora has woken up in is a real Shibuya or if it's a dream Shibuya. I'm more on the side that it may possibly be a dream Shibuya and perhaps with the next game or whatever comes next with Riku where he's in Quadradum, Riku will run into Yuzora and mention Sora to him and then Yuzora will be like oh my days I met this guy in my dreams you know that's where he is he's in my dream somewhere <laughs> or something along those lines and then we might get a type of dream drop distance situation again where you know Riku may have to dive into the dreams and find Sora in Shibuya and again that's where we might run into the world ends with you cast once more a lot to consider a lot to consider but you know but anyway that's all I'm gonna say for this video you guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Do you think the fight between Yuzora and Sora was real? Do you think Sora is really in Quadratum? Do you think the Shibuya he's in might be a dream version of Shibuya? 
what exactly are your thoughts based on everything I've said in this video? Share them below in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Remember guys, I'm a small channel, so all your support is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see similar content, then hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you're notified when I drop new videos. And anyway, that's all I've got to say, and I'm out. Peace.